Hello everyone and welcome to part 3 in our keypad door widget mini series. This is the final part of the series and in this we, well so far we've managed to get a door working uh, turned to a code. We can insert what code we want to open and I'll open the door. So we've got the major parts working. So this episode is going to be working on tidying things up and making them working as you would expect them to work. So for example, rather than using right click to open this door, we can use left click instead. And make it so it doesn't shoot at the door when we want to, don't want it to. We're also going to make it so that the widget interaction, this red line you see coming out of the gun, uh, the character at the moment, is going to be pointing at the crosshair at all times. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is make it so the left click does not shoot at the door. So I'm going to my character. And this involves a bit of changing to how the spawn projectile works at the start here. So rather than doing input action fire, press and all that stuff, we're going to disconnect these. And just going to drag these out. Uh, close that. And then from it there we're going to do a custom event. Call shoot bullet. And we'll plug that into there. Part. Okay, so this shoot bullet will now do the whole motion of the firing of the gun. So to make it see it working, if you want to see it still works the same, we go shoot and shoot bullet will now work the same. Okay. So what we need to do is do something in between that that determines whether or not we can shoot at the door or not. So in the first person character, after we fire, so don't need to shoot just yet. I'm just going to go in touch, we don't need touch controls. So when we shoot the fire button, uh, or press the fire button, which is a trigger or a left mouse click, um, we want to first of all check whether or not the in in widget interaction is hovering over any widget. So you get a widget interaction, drag it out, and then from over there, we would do hovering, or oh, it's not hovering, get hovered, there you go. And we want to check if this has got actually anything. So return value is valid. And we want the one with the question mark. Like so. So if it is valid, that means there's something there that we can interact with. So we're not going to do anything off of that. If it's not valid, we're going to make it shoot. So not valid, shoot. Hit compile. And let's test that out. So I can shoot, 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 shoot. But if I go over here and left click, it doesn't shoot. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Nothing there. Okay. So that's working correctly. So now what we need to do is transfer what we did with the right mouse button controls over here. And pop them over here. So when it's pressed, we're going to do this, these two events here. So it's is valid. We're going to go from there to is valid. And what we do when we release it, what we can do is make it so it always does a release key. So I'm going to drag that bit over here, cut that, put that into the released. And we need that widget interaction plugged into target. So even if I'm not looking at it when I release the key, it will still do the release action. Okay. Obviously you can change that. You can do this as well for the release, totally fine. But that's the way we're going to do it here. And get rid of my right mouse button now. So now my left mouse button will do all the work. Yeah. So that that's that bit done. So the next thing we'll be working on is fixing our widget interaction to be pointing towards where the crosshair is rather than just out into the world. So this is a bit difficult, this one, because you do have a crosshair that will change its location in the world coordinates based on the perspective that you're currently looking at. So to solve this, we are using a tick event. Oh, not this one. Let's do tick and turn the context back on. Event tick. So on the event tick, from here, we'll be doing a line trace by channel. Now the start for this is pretty simple. It's just the, the first person camera and get world location. And that's going to get the location of, of our camera inside the world 
and start point will be there. So our line trace is going to cast a line out. So the start position is simple enough, but the end position is slightly different because we want to take the position of the crosshair on the screen and then translate that into world coordinates based on where we're looking. So to get that, we have to get the HUD and how it's doing its thing. So if you're using the first person template like I am, in the first person HUD file, in here you can see how they're drawing the crosshair to the HUD. So we're getting the size of the viewport and dividing by two, and then offsetting by 20 in the Y, and send that to the screen X and Y position. That's all they're doing. So to do that here, we need to first of all get the viewport size. And I'm going to right click on the return value to split that into both the X and Y value. Now the rest of it is pretty much the same as what you saw just now on the HUD class. So I'm going to divide that by 2. And we're going to divide this one by 2. And we're going to offset the Y by adding 20 to it. To give it that slight offset. And then we're going to be putting this into a function. And the function is going to be uh, it's from the player controller. So get player controller. And the function is called something like uh, screen, convert screen location to world space. Let's just move this down. Like so. so the screen X is this top one here. And this one here is the Y. So this function takes a location in the screen, which this is setting up basically the same as a crosshair, so the crosshair's coordinates, and it's going to give us a location in the world and the world direction. The direction is what we want more so. So from the direction, we're going to multiply that by a length, and the length we're going to be exactly the same, oh, wrong one, it's going to be exactly the same as the length of our widget interaction. So we'll click on that, and in there you'll see interaction distance is 500. If I multiply this by 500, it'll be the same length as my widget interaction. So next I want to add that to my world location. So go add from world location and add that to it. And this will be now your end point. Now to test this out, we're going to change the draw debug type to one frame. And what that means is that as we play the game, we should see a line coming out apart from the which interaction. Let me just change that so you can easily see it. Okay. So you can see the line being cast out. Okay, and you can see it's it's it telling it where the crosshair is. You can see it matches it pretty spot on. Okay. So next now is translating that into the rotation for the widget interaction. So if I go back to my first person character in the event graph, we're going to use the out hit results to accomplish that. So right click on out hit and choose split struct pin. So from the out hit data, we're going to get the direction. So use the location, out hit location. We're going to get type in direction. And you want to use get unit direction vector. So that would be the two. So we put it into the two. And the from is going to be the current location of our widget interaction. So drag that out. And you want to get location, what location, and plug that in there. So now we'll get the rotation, or the direction, sorry, between its current position and the hit position. And if we then drag from our widget interaction here and do set rotation, set world rotation, we can plug our return value directly into there and it'll convert it to a rotation. Look that up for the execute and hit compile. Go back to your viewport and I'm just going to move this back to where I wanted it to be. So basically where the gun is in front of the camera. So now it will rotate to always face our 
interaction. So you can see it's there, it's changing itself based on where the crosshair is, not just a generic static direction. So it's constantly updating the direction to where you're pointing. So you can click on the button pad pretty accurately. Okay. So the last thing to do is just make this stuff not uh, showing the game. So when we go into there, we'll change our line trace to turn off the debug. And on the widget interaction, we're going to go over here and turn off show debug. Hit compile and play. When I'm playing the game, I can go up to here and go boop, 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 and open the door. And there you have it, our completed keypad. So the whole point of this series was to show you how you can use widgets interactive inside the actual world space. So we have just a flat widget that we can use to interact with various items. Okay. So we could use this for like computer screens, for example. We can make quite advanced widgets to accomplish all these sort of things with weird animations and so forth. I've used very basic generic shapes and colors, but these could all be artwork, animations with materials on them. You can go quite far with this. So thanks very much for watching. Hopefully you've learned something and found this interesting. If you like this sort of content, please leave a comment below uh, as suggestions to what other content you'd like to see. Do you have any particular other types of doors you'd like to see me open and close? Um, totally up to you. So if you want to see other videos in my other series, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryanade to show your support for just $1 to get access to all those benefits plus many more. Thank you to all my supporters for supporting me uh, on the channel. And other than that, thank you very much everyone and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye.